G'day, welcome to Just a Walk. Thanks, episode number two. Uh, Jono's present, Mick Gannon present, uh, Rob Scurry present, and very lucky to have Butch back, who uh, you've had a bit of a... Um, You've been in the wars a bit, old boy. Yeah, yeah. I uh, my Easter sale was cut short prematurely by a by an ankle, uh, which got the better of me. Anyway, a fetlock for those playing at home. <laughs> a, a, a hind fetlock, but um, a, a long story short. But uh, I tested the um, public health system in at the Prince of Wales at Randwick and. I got in there at 6 p.m. on Friday and out at 3.30 Saturday morning. So um, when they told me I, my abscess was a skin irritation, I got on a plane and flew back to Melbourne and uh, had someone in the know. I got a bit of special care when I got back home. Yeah, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> uh, two surgeries later and I'm here. So uh, on the mend, luckily you haven't missed any... Um... Any big sales? Well, you're there for the the biggest price yearling of all time that I can that I know of. Um, I was there for the pre pre uh, for the I saw the Philly as part of the Coolmore draft. Um, how would you describe her? Probably um, uh, don't think we'll see her at two, um, and probably I'd say would she'd be seen. Uh, the first part of her three-year-old year, she'll probably be around the provincials, I'd say. Any any chance she'll win one? Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. She could um, she could easily win a mile maiden at Gosford or somewhere, I suppose. But um, probably probably more of a Kembla wind up sort of set up. I tell you, I tell you, her her most outstanding feature, which, mm. which is not, and it's underrated. I think it's underrated. And uh, nothing to do with her physical appearance was is her demeanor. She was so, like she she was paraded that many times, and she just her disposition was stand walk stand walk. What do you want me to do next? She was so obliging, and uh, that does take you a long way. So. If if you've got a horse that's got to be carted around Australia for racing and stuff like that, uh, she is going to be exceptional. So never underestimate it. Uh, that'll make up for a, maybe a few little immaturities that she's got as a race, uh, like from a physical point of view. Rob, thoughts on the whole thing, uh, remembering that we want to be able to use most of what you say. Uh, well, I've always said attitude is more important than fitness when judging a racehorse before they race. And, um, yeah, Winx was uh, self-aware. This this really sounds like she's a little bit self-aware too. So you know, I'm sure, you know, she'll get the best of care. Um, I, don't, I don't think Winx raced until she was three. I think she, she won $8 at a Warwick Farm uh, meet, beat felines. I was on felines that day. Um, she leaves. Anyway, uh, she she'll probably go, you know go okay. Um, you know, it's not like it's Mackay Diva or anyway. Um, I, I've got no idea, but what Butch is saying about her demeanor at the sales says to me that she's got something. Mickey Gannon, Whether did you get out there to the sale complex and pull her out yourself? Yeah, I just pulled her out myself and just said just a walk, thanks, and I uh, had no idea what I was looking at. Um, it would be great for the game if she was if she was any good. Um, be really good, but uh, the data and the stats aren't really in her favour to see that. But uh, I've got a question for Bush. What would you pay for a Bush? Just open the checkbook. What would you have paid for her? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm Jack I'm, gonna, I'm going to I'm going to give you a different angle on that. I would buy her as a broodmare probably if she was by. Um, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to say that Piero is not the right stallion, but you probably maybe wanted a, a Schnitzel or Vinny foal or something a little maybe a tad sharper because uh, mm. she's she got enough stoutness in her female side. Um, you would definitely the the daughters of champion mares uh, can make very good brood mares. So um, yeah, look, she'll do what she does on the racetrack, whether it be one win or ten wins. Uh, and how long it takes her to do that. But, uh, you know, if it, they're probably being by Piero. Uh, they're going to they're gonna have to mate her to some sharper horses. So she's going to have enough on the dams line. Yeah. She gets to an Oaks and 
you know, I, you know, um, yeah, there's, there won't be any right and wrong on that, but it's, she's just going to have to defy the history, which is and always has been, that these champion mares that race on to an older age, they just don't leave anything anywhere near themselves. But uh, um, now, just to answer your question, Rob, Winks won on the 4th of June at Warwick Farm over 1,100 metres, so she had one run as a... Okay, months. it's very, very late in the season. Very late in the season, uh, soft ground. Yeah. Uh, she actually got a second. She won their first suit. She won a 1,400 at Rose Hill on the 28th of June. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, is, Bush, is you deflected time? that really well there, Bush. That was a good deflection. And I asked Jack then, what would you put <laughs> for a Jack? <laughs> can, we, can we say well, that maybe Piero's not as good? Like I always said Poissier was a better three-year-old than Piero until Gay kind of gutted it running in the um, Cox play where Piero ran third. But maybe Poissier is actually a better stallion now than Piero. He's come off a very low base. Be wondering if what what Butch thinks of that. I'll jump in there. I think he's a better stallion. Butch? Yeah. Uh, Pe- Parcier over Piero. Mm. Yeah. 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 And then, and probably in hindsight, there's a lot of stallions that that stand in Australia that I think would be much more suited to New Zealand. I think Piero would have been one of them. Bit of time, bit of bit of kick in the ground, that sort of stuff. Ideal, you know. I mean. Uh, they, they, it's hard to do that when they win a slipper, but um, um, yeah. Oh, but anyway, I've got to answer Mick's question, which is how much would you pay? Um, no, look, I wouldn't have paid 10 million for that filly, but um, you know, um, uh, I, there's a bit of a difference when you already own a third of it and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. What would you pay for it? Uh, it's generally considered that there was going to probably make around three to four, so yeah. You wouldn't want to pay any more than probably three for that Piero filly, no, knowing that you've got to probably spend at least a hundred to two hundred on your service fees with her. But um, yeah, it's um, you, 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 you're buying a broodmare when you buy that that um, filly that was sold the other day. I agree. I agree, and you wouldn't even entertain it because of the hype. That'd go against everything we uh, sort of think, wouldn't it? Yeah. Speaking, well, of, speaking of hype, prior to Jenny, now again, I know you were done the rounds, the content king. Um, we haven't. I'll just roll here for a bit. Fascinated by the narrative about how good the ride was. Fascinated. Just highlighted the the lack of depth in racing media. Like he literally got off the horse and said, "I couldn't hold her." So yeah. like not so, fighting a horse is like the greatest ride anyone's ever seen. Um, staggered by that, we were like we witnessed a phenomenal performance, a freakish performance. There was nothing any other rider in that race could do, in my opinion, to to change that that result. Um, the the tantrums post race were just peak racing. The um, best. I loved it. Gunner. Uh, you summed up perfectly. So watching the race, the emotions high. I was definitely one that was like, wow, what a performance, enormous, like full credit to Declan Basin. He still gets it because you, you'll you see this more often than not, fellas, like the horse will go and they'll fight it, they'll train it, and the horse will get beat. So he did the right thing in a high-pressure situation. That was the best piece of the ride. Um, the horse did it on her own merits. So that's become pretty obvious. Um. So that's pretty clear. No data. The data didn't come through for a while, which is interesting. Mm. I suggest because the screen was probably had to be 40, so wide, they had to go buy new TVs or find a way to stretch it out or measure it because <laughs> 40 length margin would have made it near impossible to to well, zoom in and find out where your the, markers were. The bulk of that data that everyone is quoting comes from the same sort of source and it's yeah. clocked off a TV in another country. So, yeah. but, you know, they're normally imagine, clocking it when the horses in. are size X on the screen yeah. going past landmarks that they have on, on the running pole. Um, yeah. Now they're like size Close. X divided by 12. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a bit of a task for the... Um, definite. Definite tough task. Yeah, definite tough task. But anyway, the data came through eventually and, and it was pretty, um, you know, spot on with what you said. It was exactly spot on with what you said. The performance was the horse was phenomenal. I don't think any other horse beats it. I don't know 
how they beat her unless they team right and they send something out to beat her next time. Uh, won't be Kieran Stable, so maybe Chris has got to send one out and, and burn one, but you don't want to be an owner on the receiving end of that. Uh, she's great for racing, and I'd love to see it, and I'd back this, so got uh, that. Butch? Uh, yeah, well, well, probably my first observation with Pride of Jenny is that uh, it was very similar the way her aggression in that race was similar to when Regan Ballas rode her in Sydney that time. And it sort of takes me back more of a horse thing that if when you travel horses, they tend to um, want to jump out and run from the gates. And um, that's one thing I've observed in my lifetime of horses. So um, that, uh, I just noted that that was a lot more aggressive than what we saw in Melbourne, even in the Australian Cup. Um, you know, she probably could have got away with going a fraction quicker in the in the mid-race at around the 600 mark. Um and, uh, you know, it was only a head. Was it a head, a Cascadian? You know, you just need to get him out of his comfort zone by a length or two, and she's probably nabbed him as well. So that was what I noted, that her aggression is a lot more heightened with her trips up to Sydney. Um, and we maybe we would have seen the real pride of Jenny when Regan Bayless rode her had it not been a bog track. So well, that, that's uh, the fast. He copped, didn't he cop 18 weeks for that? He co- Stopped yeah. a long time. Yeah, Eight, it was 18 long. weeks. But the is, difference this is... is this time the ownership group came out and said this was a beautiful ride. The difference last time was the ownership and the and the connections apparently suggested that the horse wasn't ready to be ridden like that. And... Which in a sport that's that's like revolves yeah. on it requires wagering. Mm. How so Regan was so dumb? essentially thrown under the bus. The, the, but the horse went faster on Saturday to the yeah. 600 metres than it went there. Um, question for Rob. Um, Rob, do you see a lot of interstate horses turn up at in Sydney and uh, maybe land a bit closer in the run than than they generally would, you know, from where they are back in their home states? I can't really answer it, Butchers. I, I don't do do enough form on on the horses coming in um, from interstate. You know, I, I don't watch replays um, of Melbourne races, so. Um, yeah. I can't really answer it, mate. Sorry, but you know, obviously, with the, with the great horses like this one, um, you know, I, I'm I was dirty. I just backed her in the Australian Cup to start before, and um, yeah, look, it, it was no Pan, Panthalista versus Equinox, but I, I actually did love it. I did, I got tingles because um, the Panthalista versus Equinox, they ran like one fifty seven nine or eight on a road, and um, you know, the Japanese fans were screaming, you know. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, whereas at Randwick, we it was pre- again pretty pretty sparsely filled. Um, it was just me and some other shout out James um, in play bloke who you know dumped dumped it at the all on at the thousand meter mark or something. Um, because they weren't going to catch it. Is James um, is James a bald man with a beard? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Um, how did he parade? Super, super. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, she dappled up. Um, you know, I, I popped a look at her in the back parade, and yeah, she looked. They, you know, they, they all they all do. Um, you know, I Mia Culper, I fell into the you know the, the favourite, which ran well, but she was coming off a um, slowly run walk ran it, and there's a chance that this could happen. Um, but you know, it wouldn't be a walk this time. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it was yeah. I, I literally got tingles when she went past me. At the two hundred, I was in the wink stand up the top, and she would have been still, you know, twenty five lengths clear or whatever it was. It was, it was pretty cool. Rob, I think that's the most significant point you make is that they are not machines. And previous to I think it was the race that she came out of was twenty odd lengths slower. Yeah, it was bad. Um, that was pretty much always going to be on the cards, especially when Lindemann was a late scratching as well. That, yeah. That's what that's what does my head in me. Like, yeah, what's Willow supposed to do? Tie them all up to make it a he better ro- race. He for rode like, to perfection. He crossed from a horse. wide draw, put the horse in the PR spot. Yeah. What's J Mac supposed to do? Take off for the twelve hundred because it's like it's just ridiculous. So many times you see that race, that horse stops. Like that, that's say, why everyone's going. Fuck! That was that was amazing. What happened? Because it doesn't happen. But, watching it overhead, there was. I don't know if it was maybe. I don't know, maybe fourteen hundred beta mark. They were in a line of three, 
I found that a little bit interesting. Mm. Like, I was like, well, why, what's doing here? There's a bit of opportunity and, yeah, anyway, is yeah. what it is. You, you know how they say sometimes that they've got, like, stopwatches in their head? They obviously yeah. don't because I know <laughs> she's got a mile in front, but it was only doing 12 and a half seconds. It was not like, you know, it's not Pantelista doing 11 flat. I think Emma but- Friedman or is it Emma Friedman? Yeah, could be. I think she asked a question of that, and he goes, oh, "Sometimes I try and count, but I knew I just stopped. I knew we were going too quick, and just prayed." <laughs> it was an eleven, eleven. In he there. was great post race, like how honest he was. Yeah, there, there was some some quick, but overall, what was the time? Two oh two, two oh three on a good four. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's the it's like a very very slow uh, last six hundred from all the horses, particularly the winner. Uh, it capped off a pretty fat day for Kira Ma Davis. Just oh. Shout out to Dave. Hope he's going well in Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> for Kira Ma and his team, um, like Rob said, like got that Philly mayor through uh, the All Star Mile, Australian Cup, and paraded out standing for another big race. Um, they won the Sydney Cup with, um, I believe, Butcher's Sons Purchase Circle of Fire with that horse. That again, what, the ride certainly didn't help that horse win that race. The horse did oh. so, so well bought. Wilbur, um, uh, Jono, we've got a, uh, we've got an Alabama Express filly with Kieran. We do. Yep, purchased at the uh, Premier Yearling Sale. Um, geez, have you seen uh, Adrian Corboy much more excited, Jack, on any of our other ones that have been through his joint? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I'd like to. Butch, you got any sort of insights there into uh, Adrian? Do you know him at all? Adrian, yeah, I've known Adrian for many years. Um, he's Is this the uh, man who's breaking in um, our horse, yeah. our two fillies who Kieran Ma, and he breaks in a lot of horses for Kieran Ma. Yeah, no, no, he's done done a few for me over the journey too. He's um, he's uh, looks at life uh, a little bit differently than most of us. He homeschools about ten children that he that he has that he sired. Yeah, he's got about <laughs> ten of them. Very and, mad. Uh, it'd be like that. The, Hard enough for school holidays. Uh, well, they just said, I, well, every, every day is a school holiday. But uh, I, I remember turning up there one day, and they're they're just like little, little um, they're just they're just they were just scurrying everywhere. You know, they, they were they were they were like, they were like, on like the back. Troop. They, they were on the back of. <laughs> they, they were, were unbroken. Of were they? they were they were everywhere. They were they were all working. They're all they were, they they don't know anything else. But. Uh, um, uh, they'll they'll probably all turn out to be outstanding human beings. So um, they're being free range, but they don't like he doesn't have a TV in the house. You know, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's something to it's a it's an interesting day when you go spend it up at Adrian's. But uh, very good horseman, knows his stuff inside out, does a really good job, and um, has had many a good horse pass through the uh, stable. And when he uh, when he talks upbeat about a horse, uh, take it from me, that's a very, very good sign. Well, I uh, I did uh, get a call from him today. Uh, I didn't tell you this, Jack. I waited until uh, until the show, but he, he's very excited by this filly. Um, she's, she's finished up her breaking in. She'll go for a little break, uh, probably about four weeks, and then come come straight back in. So, uh, J-O-N-O at the mailbag. That's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Com. She, she is available. Is, um, can we it. put a, a bigger boom on any sire than Alabama Express, Butch? Is there a bigger boom on a young young sire than it? Uh, I was just looking at his figures before, actually. Um, I'm very impressed with the amount of runners he's had. And that's – I can remember when Costa went to stud, his oh. first season wasn't outstanding. Like, he never hit the ground, like, with outstanding horses – but he had a lot of runners, and what that tells you is they go into the stable, they eat, they cope, they and they've got a great constitution. And um, I, I remember inspecting Alabama Express at Yulong with him and Grunt. I went up there with uh, Tim Brown from Magic Millions, and we had a look at those stallions. And um, once again, the most impressive part about Alabama Express, besides so been a lovely horse because he was an Easter yearling. But he uh, he had a he's had a, a very good temperament, and um, and that goes a long long way as we've as we've seen. So 
Um, yeah, so the amount of runners, but the you know these winners to runners, stakes winners, he's had an extremely good start. To uh, a bit like in Costa, off a relatively low base. I remember in Costa went to start because um, was Melman's biggest bet in the, in the in the Guineas when it got when they went out suicidal speed in the uh, 96 Guineas. But he went out at 8,000 and it wouldn't have been seeing great mares. And you say the same thing about Alabama Express. You, he wouldn't have been seeing, you know, the first, the schnitzel pick for sure anyway. No, 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 no. Well, you, you, you long have been buying a lot of very good mares, you know, the, the top class group one winners, but he hasn't seen them yet. The, the, that, 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 this first crop that we're looking at is just, just numbers from you long. Um, some nice mares, obviously, amongst them, but not the cream of the crop. You'll you'll find now that he will now gather a lot of very very good horses and good mares to go to him. So, um, um, being a Alabama Express filly, this one that we've bought second foal, uh, foot. second foal, yeah, ready to strike. Uh, but uh, a very valuable commodity, Alabama Express filly. So if he if he explodes into an Uncosta, I'm Invincible Stallion, mm. um, then very, very cheap because I would say that uh, we won't be able to buy another one uh, in the future. That yeah, is... like doing that work I did with, with Josh, at, at the head of data at Kieran's, like he, he very much stands out as the best up-and-comer. So, you know, with the season almost at a close, this is one – you know, sort of one proper couple of sales to go. I'm very glad we got one in because, yeah, it could go off its head and be very, very hard to to get moving forward. Yeah. yeah and, and, of course, the I think what aided us in Melbourne was the fact that Yulong had about 77 horses in their draft with a, a lot of Alabamas and, and there was a, a few others around the complex. So it's just a, it, because of the numbers, uh, then it just spreads a little bit, and and the price just comes comes down from that. But um, yeah, so you know, opportunity is there, and uh, yeah, you know, we took it. Anything else, John? Um, I was just going to say to Butch, that, um, out of a scat daddy mirror as well. Obviously, that uh, Australian uh, American cross uh, has been successful in the past. Um, Skep Daddy's produced Justify, No Na- Never, uh, Sue Nation. Um, so oh, my God. Some really good American blood there. Yeah. Yeah, no, it works really well. It's um, it's uh, it's it's no, it's not a fluke because, um, you know, guys like John Muir, Milburn Creek, Henry Field, Newgate, they go over every year to the US buying these mares and um, a lot of these good uh, two-year-olds that we see are out of these you know, two and three year olds uh, are out of those American mares, but um, that that cross with uh, with the uh, Mister Prospector, which is the sire of the dam of that mare, that's uh, um, that stallion line just blends in beautifully with uh, Alabama Express. That it's it's just it's got a massive amount of stakes winners and a little bit of a crossover here, Jack. But a uh, little filly uh, Autumn Miss that ran yesterday. Uh, ran a very good second, but uh, the winner uh, for Tony Gollan that did beat us home, I'm invincible out of a scat daddy mare. Mm. It's, it is it is a, like a, a proven sort of way to get a horse. Interesting too, that that Autumn Sun Philly, Autumn Miss, that's a like a Japanese sort of cross, Japanese family we're into there. So mm-hmm. uh, she likes to swim, which is surprising to me, but... Um, You'd think further she goes, the better she'll get. Yeah, she was very, um, very, very positive performance yesterday. Yeah, very impressive. Thirteen fifty first up. We certainly think she'll get over a trip. Might go to either a mile or eighteen hundred at her next start before we start dreaming of possibly going to uh, better races than that. Hopefully, so. And she uh, ate up overnight, Butch. They love eating up. Is that how important is that as a trainer? Um, seems to be like the number one indicator to a horse's oh well, that's that's, that's post con- run. It's the constitution that I've spoken about with you know a horse's demeanour and and just the ability to handle preparations and that's where that's what one of the things is 
you know, looking at the numbers of runners that these stallions get as two year olds, and that's that's that um, that's passed on, you know, and that's so the yeah no, it, it's it's the be all and end all really because um, you can't put fuel in the tank, the car will run out of petrol, so they've got to eat. So that's a that's a it's a positive, but just on the autumn sun, he got the Oaks winner last week, Autumn Angel, uh, which is no surprise to me, but it it just an interesting sidelight to uh, stallions like him um, and the one that's racing at the moment, which will go to start militarise. So in my eyes, the Autumn Sun and militarise, both horses that in, you know, uh, me growing up, Rob, Rob's mm-hmm. seen a lot of racing as well, is that those horses would be winning Victorian derbies and yes. uh, uh, AJC derbies. It's AJCs in the past, I know that. Um, and I look at them as staying stallions. So just because the connections were trying to keep their profiles, you know, look, this is not a slow horse. And that just because a horse wins over ground doesn't mean it's slow. Just means it, like a derby winner is, you know, uh, the best of its generation, isn't it? So, um, you know, <laughs> he, got, he got run down. He got run down, didn't he, by uh, El- Elvstrom? What's my favourite um, one called? I've forgotten it. I've been trying to think of it for three minutes. Your favourite one? My favourite, like, sire back in the day. Oh, Northern oh, Dancer. Northern, Northern Dancer. That's right, Northern Dancer. Northern Dancer. No, but uh, so it's just, so it, it it's no surprise to me. So if you've got an autumn sun, you, which you have, um, just just look at it through the eyes of a, of a horse that could easily get over a mile and a half. Mm. You know, that's the yeah, way that's, I That's would, what we did. Even even though they wouldn't allow him to run any further, mm. I'm sure he would have eaten up the ground the autumn sun as yeah. it militarised. You know, being by done deal, he, you know, he would just he would just chew into it. You know. Yep. Um, boys, anything else we should talk about? Any other takeaways, Mick or Butch, from the Easter English sale? Nothing from me. Uh, well, a bit by... concerned about the health care in New South Wales, though. But other than that, it's about it. Oh, I'm not surprised. There's no better here. The Saturday, the Saturday night before Ted came, I had to take Lenny to the local hospital because she had, was like not breathing the best. It was it was a 12 a.m. entry. It was a 7 p 7 a.m. departure, and basically she sort of just righted herself. <laughs> she was assessed once. So I. I... I, I I found the care at the uh, Northern Hospital at Epping outstanding. Very good. But I, one thing I'll throw at you, Jack, is you'd be inclined to be on top of this when you when your baby's not eating. No good. Same mm. as a horse, right? Good. And, good. And you want to give them the very best indicator. start to life. Yeah. Or your little caboodle dog, which was feeling a bit sick, which was. Whining in its little house all night. I was chucking things out, and it turned out it was crook as a dog and wouldn't eat his breakfast and crook all day. Moral of the story: If they're not eating up, yeah, that's what we're saying. If they're not <laughs> eating up. Don't throw things at them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's exciting with the, with the order miss Japanese thing. It, it's you know, there's so many weak eighteen hundred three year old or two thousand meter races around. If she Proper. can. Uh, it was it was honestly like it was before Butch was involved, but it was one of my strategies. Butch was to, if we're going to buy a yearling, let's buy one that's got a really good, um, great tight walks well and a nice page that says she's she that was mainly fillies for more protection is going to be better as a three year old and get a trip because when you bet like we do, and Gano, you back this up, you and I yep. be the main sort of ratings people here. It takes a, a a far inferior number to win a very good race over eight hundred meters plus than it does to win a race in Australia from a thousand of sixteen hundred meters. It's quite incredible, to be honest. So there's the, and the prize money is exactly the same. So yeah, yeah. And Rob's always been a little bit excited because there's got a bit of Japanese blood in there, and he loves Japanese mm-hmm. racing more than anyone I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, well, I've, I've directed Pistol to go directly to Fuchu. He's he's not here today. And um, yeah, looking forward to maybe getting a bit of a some mail from Fuji from Pistol to be watch this space. Mailbag.com.au. <laughs> Should we start tipping some horses? Let's tip some horses because the cleaner's about to turn up and about to get back here out of this joint. <laughs> a bit of a 
bit of a flex there. The clan is coming. Too good. No, well, it's the truth. Uh, Randwick <laughs> race four. Let's start there. I like one here. Mickey Gannon, take it away. Ah, Tannhouse's race to lose. Maps perfectly. Barrier three and aggressive J Mac on. Have to sit more forward than um, the midfield. And I you know, did a bit of work. Got it to about $2.50. You're still getting around $3.10. It's a really easy bit to have. I don't think the the, the, the 2000s are query. Um, and I don't, I have no real wrap on salt coats and no real wrap on anything behind it. But you do. I, I like I Kintyre. I like Kintyre a lot. The, and the only possible. Talk to me about Kintai as a type. You're on mute. Still on mute. <clears throat> He's still, still trying. on mute. Oh, I was just, yeah, I, I was just looking at the race. It does look thin. It does look very, very thin. Kintai is just about one of those horses, always in the numbers, but kind of might be a number at this sort of grade. He's probably going to run third or fourth, or like his form suggests. Mm. Um, he hasn't won for a long, long time, Jack. Um, I remember you, Butch, you were keen on Tannhauser first up. Um, and uh, yeah, you can only say it, it ran well in a stronger race than this. Um, I was half keen on, um, you know, a, a Joe Pride maiden sort of horse <laughs> as maybe the third pick in Bullets High, which um, couldn't barely ran a place at Gosford the other day. So, um, it does seem like a very thin race, and um, yeah, I, I'd be leaning towards uh, Townhouse as we actually did have a, a play on it last week. It's not not the worst play on on the boards. On the boards high, there's plenty of scope there where some of these are very much well found out, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, I, I'm looking at looking at them and going, is this a Wednesday? Is this a Saturday or a Wednesday race, or is it? Yeah. It's a three year old because these horses are soon enough they're going to be four, and then you got to think where do, where do they fit in on a Saturday or a Wednesday? Did Kintai race against Tannhauser last start and start half the price? Correct. It also, um, Kintai beat it in the far lap, started $6.50 versus Tannhauser 41s and beat it by 2.3, uh, coming home better than Tannhauser up to the 2000. Long, 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 long prep, Kintai. Just seems to yeah. have not gone out for, for, for months. It's, it's still parading good, but yeah, I'm. Um, yeah. Hopefully he's like his trainer, Butch, so he can handle it. I just, <laughs> Butch, where is he he's gone? I uh, prefer the 14, 15, 16, 2000 as a profile, like compared to Kintyre. Sorry, Butch. No, you're right. Um, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm still here. Um, you keep talking, Mick. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate. what he's going to state. So a lot of these are sort of head on. Just trying to negotiate my new iPad, that's all. <laughs> Is there any is Townhouse the, like the Brisbane Derby horse or is that yeah. bullets, bullets yes. high? Wouldn't surprise me. Um, they got to get it. They got, they got to get a couple of wins out of him. Should have yeah. won last start. He was beat. He had been by Newcastle. It was just given like obviously map the treat. Given a mm. great ride by uh, Blake Shin, I think it was. The, the race set up perfectly, but I'm pretty sure Townhouse was a good six seven lengths back. Was a run on was a run on track at that stage though. It was, but Ducas was, was like a suck beautiful run. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it, it paraded well. We 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 saved on him in the race. We we're on a that, that and the Gay Waterhouse thing that failed. But yeah, Ducas. Yeah, was, definitely. I I agree. With you. Yeah, it was definitely run on, but eight lengths. No, 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 yeah, exactly. I think that's a stronger race than this race. Well, oh, was he saying that? Oh, it has to be. But he's saying that was. The reason why you can't back Tannhauser and Kintyre for a result, mm. because one's three dollars, one's five bucks. Yep. All right. Race number seven. It's the Champagne Stakes, six hundred meter Group One for the two-year-olds, the up-and-coming <coughs> linebacker. Gana. Yeah, interesting Thoughts. map. This so small field, uh, eight horses. I know he's going to be out in front. Rock hard fit. Hippo's back on. A dry track, soft five. I think it's an advantage a node. You're getting a good enough price to find out. It meets uh, linebacker three kilos better from the Bailu and broadsiding four kilos better. Broadsiding's ranked that form, winning really well. I'm not sure how much improvement, and Rob's the one to probably answer this. Broadsiding will make on the seven day backup, Rob. 
Yeah, I, I, I missed it the other day. It's, it's funny. It's a funny um, shaped horse. Mm. Um, Broadsiding. Sorry, no, it's a different. I, I, did that yeah. win the first? Did, did that win the, the good old thing? Of, won the first race in really good style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, number three. It's not sure how much improvement if they come off that four kilos worse off a node. So the way I've sort of lined it up is a node versus Manal. Um, Manal fifth up. This is one for you guys. Fifth up, two year old Philly fifth up. Is there any worries there with that? Is that deep into the prep? For sure. Yeah, for me, there's worries. Yeah. Butch? Uh, well, you've got to trust the connections at this point in time, I suppose. Um, but surely they're just uh, guessing at this point in time because they're like, well, that's just, there's only one more run. Let's just go to the well and find out, right? Well, well, maybe she's just, she's really, she's licked, licked the, the feed bin, eaten <laughs> up. Um, Having uh, left a dipper. Well, that's right. As long as they haven't been throwing things at her, Rob. The, I would say, so just, just on broadsiding, he's by too darn hot. He's another yep. stallion that's actually had a really good start. Um, yep. He's um, he's had a, a very, very good start to his season with his runners and winners, um, something like 18 runners, five winners, stakes winners. Um, and uh, the uh, I've just got to give one stallion a little clip at the moment, uh, which is Blue Point. He's had 23 runners for, I think, he something won a six-horse two-year-old over in Perth or something. Um, uh, he's apparently gone very good in the Northern Hemisphere, but hasn't fired a shot here. His horses seem to troll up good, show a lot of speed, but race day just hasn't come for Blue Point. Uh, and um, that's another conversation for another day that some horses fire in the one hemisphere and not in the other. Um, oh, that is interesting, Butch. Super Seth Cole. Yeah, I'll see. He's going good. I, that that horse of uh, the the young fella Sutton that's just started training. Um, I thought the win at Packenham was good. He backed it up at Caulfield, so that's a repeat performance. Looks a good, genuine horse, and um, this one of Johnny O'Shea's too. So, uh, Super Seth, typical Kiwi sort of stallion. The late, you know, just coming good later in the season. Uh, Two year olds. Um, signs are good for him. Signs are good for Super Set. The signs are good for him at the Magic Millions. Like the money they'll bring in said that the the connections, the trainers, the the breeders had an opinion of him at home. Yep. Yeah, that can go both ways. They can go off stallions. They went off Zabil early doors, and until they worked out, they you know came good at you know some of some of those Zabils. Uh, I only had a couple of them, but some of them didn't come good until they were like four and five. You know, so that's a, that's a, you know, you've got to have the right connections in a racehorse to be able to sort of go that journey. Can, so, I, well. can, I, can I say something about too darn hot? To me, its breeding looks like it's going to breed stayers, yet it seems to be getting a lot of fast horses. This this to, this is exciting along with the stats. Yep. Yeah, no, that's that's, Duba- that's good point. Yeah, Dubawi, Dubawi on one side, I go back to Mr. Prospector, Jack. Mm. And on the other side, it's 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 uh, Grand Broodmary's by Singspiel, um, oh. yeah, which goes back to you know Sadler's wealth, son of Northern Dancer, I think related to. No, no, Dancer. there's no Northern Dan. There's no Northern Dancer. Sadler's might be a grandson. Uh, fair enough. Saddles Wells. Um, For anyone listening, yeah, wondering why I was such a Butch got me to read a book and I've learned all about these old stallions and that's sort of what I talk about at the sales just to get him to giggle because we just want the big fella giggling and in good good spirits when he's got eyes on ponies. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, bring out a nice one. Just one more walk. Thanks. Thanks. Too darn hot, boy. Um, it's exciting. That's um, nice. uh, the other stallion that's got good early figures too is Pierata. Um, he's got um, he's had fifteen runners, four winners, a couple of stakes winners. Oh, we all know Coleman. Coleman looks so. What's Coleman going to do as a three-year-old, Mick? Um, wow, we. I think Coleman's going to go good. Sorry, as the vacuum just starts. <laughs> uh yeah, Coleman looks looks really impressive. I did some profiling actually on some of these two-year-olds and there's a traffic wardens horse that. She's been flying under the radar. We're talking about horses with um, potential and upside. 
a whisker off probably winning a size and a golden slipper. Um, who's traffic warden by? Because I have no idea. There might be a two down hot as well. Is it? I didn't see He's that. Out. Feeling it. Got to buy what? some, Jack. Uh, Street boss, sorry. Okay. That makes sense with the name. Street. Um, if I had to choose between um, Traffic Warden and Coleman, I, I would be choosing um, Traffic Warden, but Coleman has a huge, huge future. I probably just gave out last 200 metres. Hey, back to this race that we were um, <laughs> that we were previewing. <laughs> um, broadsiding there, thereabouts. Uh, linebacker, so longer break, one less run than a node, map negative compared to a node, and... Three kilos weight difference, and one's two dollars eighty, one's eight dollars. I was, okay. I was looking at the same too. What do you put the the last start down to? The heavy track yeah. fail or or, or well, this is why I was so keen on traffic warden because that on a day that you couldn't do what that horse did, and that's fight on. Mm. Um, he probably handled the rain affected track. He'd been to four hundred meters before, um, although albeit you know a node. Had a work has as well, but I just think the wet track was probably the, the main reason. I just don't think it handed it, but Rob might be able to give more insight. There. I, mean, yeah, I just think good for soft Coleman. line. I yeah. know beat Coleman three starts back, so yeah, yeah, 100%. Reads well. Anyway, that's my I'm happy to have a have a bet in that race on a node. And if it's a good four, I'm not going to bet, yeah, but a good four, soft five. There's a bit of rain forecast, five to ten mils. I don't think that's five mils is that much. Small Mick, that's forward, a shitload. Small from the Swans texting me saying it's going to be a heavy track right now. Yeah. If, if that's... Ha, if five signals comes up... He's too busy texting me for winners at Sun Curry. <laughs> Ramwick don't handle handle rain on race day at all. It'll, it'll be an eight, it'll be a nine if there's five, ten mils. We'll have, a, we'll have a cheap bottle of red on it. Nah, and a ten, ten's different to five, but five... We had one the day Storm Boy won. One mil on race day. Yeah, but don't forget, Rob, this is, here's the difference, and I've got a really deep theory on this. The weather that hasn't been hotter than 24 degrees this week, not a drop of irrigation would have gone on that track. It was 30 degrees, and they would have put 42 mils on that track, and it was already half cast before the rain got there. Anyway, yeah. just a theory. Yeah, no, no. Good. I like that theory. Yeah. Just a theory. And in winter... When it when they when they don't they don't irrigate and it's windy, these tracks are like rock 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 hard. But in summer they get scared. It's like the green keepers at the golf course; they get real mm. nervous. They just hose them all day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Should, should so, we, they didn't hose them much. At, they didn't hose them much at Augusta the first two days, eh, Mick? Nah. And it, like, the wind what? dried it out, and made it real tough. Dried it out big time. Um, How many do you reckon you would have had there on Saturday? 90 something. Mm. I'll be playing for the 100. Just keep it like two double figures. It'll be my goal. <laughs> I, would have got, I would have got 89, but that would have been on the last hole. Right, nine. <laughs> <laughs> what a joy. What a joy. Uh, the what do you have, how do you guys, um, Rob, how do you want to play the um, the champagne? Oh, I just, <laughs> just look at, have a look just at him. Let's let him speak to him, mate. Just let him speak to uh, him. We're, we're on Manal last start. We had a small result there. Mm. We back linebacker as well. We had, a, we, we had a big push there. Um, so I, I think those two are well in the race. But, you know, just, I think, we, you know, I saw broadsiding the other day and um, I missed it in the yard. It looked a little bit immature, but it paraded, you know, very professionally and, and well. But as a specimen, um, I wasn't that impressed by it. It might be growing into a better three-year-old, but it might, might be too good. Perfect race to actually, you know, give a great example as to why Rob Scurry's mounting our male is so effective and valuable because there's horses here that we're, we're saying, oh, you know, fifth up or whatever it is. Mm. And a like, node? Any push on, on the ponies all? for you? Um, I, yeah, it just, it just, it looks like, um, like a like a sprinter, so like 12, 14, 100 yeah. meter horse, but, you know, it's, it's so honest. It, it's, it's barely run a bad race all prep, but, I'd, I'd be, I'd, I'm not sure if it runs 1600. Just like by the look of it, by this stage of the, the season, you, you know, there's the the sprinters and the, you know, maybe horses will get out over a bit longer. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's more of a 1200 meter horse, but a very good horse. So it'll try. And this is out. this is typical of the stable that they will roll the dice, right? Yeah, yeah. always yeah. have done. Yeah. Okay, what are they? Got to break some eggs to make some omelets. <laughs> That's good gear. 
here all week, trying to reveal. Race eight, the all age stakes, 400 meter group one, wait for age. Mickey Gannon, give us a map. Uh, my computer's been uh, shut down, so I'm just working off uh, off the jack, but uh, off the top of my head, um, the Buffalo River. I don't think they'll make the same mistake with Timmy Clark this time. They won't take the sit behind a $71 shot. They'll roll forward. There'll be enough speed in this race. I think that'll set up for Espiona to be in a running line. I think that'll be helpful for Espiona. Whether or not that horse wants to win, well, that's another question. Um, now, I'll probably cop a bit of bit of slack for this. I thought, to be honest, Nitros is a stupid price, around $31. We'll do no work and have a chance. Um, and Southport Tycoon, I reckon he's one of the better three-year-olds. That four might been Frank again with V8 coming out and winning, and Southport Tycoon made V8 look okay um, in Melbourne. So they're the three. Um, Riff Rocket through those. the same race as well. Uh, what's that? Riff Rocket through the guineas Rocket. as well, just to frank it a little bit further. Just to frank it a little bit further. So there's the three that I could bet around in saying that I could probably still get beat. But well, Chain of Lightning seems seems in good form. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I have to go back and look at data, but I'm pretty sure that the, that TJ wasn't an electric TJ, and I'm pretty yeah. sure it was run to suit. And I don't know if you can – this 1,400 metres might be a faster run 1,400 metres what we saw in the TJ, mm. which could very much bring her undone. Now, if you get to a, a heavy track, then she's back in – and look, then – Half of what we said is almost out the window, isn't it? Um, mm. I've assessed everything on a soft bite, um, which is just a nature of the beast at this stage. It's all you can do. Hey, Jack, uh, what, what about the significant riding change with Mark Zara going on to Buenos Noches? Big. Well, yeah, I'm kind of pissed off that Gano found that horse. I think it's <laughs> like a ridiculous price. The easiest, easiest bet at Randwick on Saturday. I had a mark thirteen dollars. Well, just off its there's like there's about four different reasons why it's a good bet, and I only need one normally. But one one it, less now because I like an, it. Like no knock, Benny Mellon. I hope he recovers quickly from his injury. But Mark Zara is Mark Zara. That's a that's a t- big tick. SP profile is a big tick. Like he started fucking five dollars in the new market three starts ago. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, the only chink to the horse is the um, the distance, but so he's going to get a soft run. You have to do mm. absolutely nothing. He'll Barrier need some three, luck. Three, Mark Zara. So like, not only does a horse draw a nice friendly gate to like maybe use it, he's mm. then got the the most like fearless rider in Australia on. So like, that even when you be... get J Mac and Waller, you kind of know there's a bit of a debate about like, oh, it's a wide draw. Chris doesn't want me to do this, and I always ride for Chris. Mark doesn't give a shit. Mark will do whatever Mark wants and thinks is the best. What what, he, what Mark 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 will do is he'll find the right lane in the straight. Yeah, that tracks mm. and the right restaurant. Sort of... <laughs> Who's paying? That tracks meant to be four to ten. I think lanes one completely inferior, two and three okay, uh, or not great, sorry, and then four four okay, and then five to sort of nine ideal, and then ten a bit wider. But there'll be a there'll be a little uh, alleyway of greatness, I think. I think the other horse that's a stupid price is Buffalo River. Agree. I, I love the jockey place. switch. Um, rock hard fit, tough, grouse form, Friday Jenny, bright side form. That's that's as good as it gets. And if I was on a I was on him last start, but as a lead up run to this, that's probably not a bad not a bad run, you know what I mean? It certainly wasn't a gut buster. Mm. What about Magic Time out to the 1,400? That was the two runs over 1,400 last prep where it was wide throughout, narrowly missed in the invitation, um, but still won the Sir Rupert Clark sitting wide throughout. Yeah, I, looks to suit. I, I have it eight bucks. Yeah, no knock. I just didn't have it. I think maybe one or two rolls outside of what it's priced, but it wasn't like horrible. That's the Rupert Clark run. You wouldn't want to, I don't think you'd want to lose on it if, like, if, you're, if you're betting that way. This mm. race is interesting too because we know Rob's already going to have definitely he's going to have one bet in this race. Um, race one, no, in race eight, are you going to back any other horses or just private eye? <laughs> well, if, it, if, it's, if it's wet, <laughs> if it's wet, um, I, I might think twice, but I'll, yeah, I'm going to back private eye, whatever, have even if it is wet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but but, uh, <laughs> but Rob, Rob, Rob and I had two wins on heavy ground. Well, the stable tell you doesn't like it, you know. Yeah, well, maybe the um, maybe you just stick to the form and worry. But we'll cut the outside noise out of this, eh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, That's good. I just yeah. handed a note from my daughter. It's been very good. They're making some lunch. It's getting quite late. <laughs> He's um. Well, at least you're not. At least you're not throwing anything at him. Hawkesbury today. Any any horses running, Rob? Hawkesbury? No, no, no. Don't look at Hawkesbury. <laughs> got some I got a few at Tunkari. Still got two left. Still two okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, let us know. Put it in the chat. It's been a pretty long show, boys. Do you want to keep going? Talk about anything else? I can't go anywhere. <laughs> 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 I've, I'm I'm literally chained to the couch. So anyway, yeah. I, I want to know what horses we've got available. What have we got left in Jono? All right. Uh, well, we've got still a little bit in Rashiri uh, for a tried horse option that heads to Reese Goodwin, uh, about 75% gone in that. That's our first horse with Reese. He used uh, to work for you a bit, didn't he, Butch? Reese he Goodwin, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can tell you a few stories about Reese. <laughs> <laughs> maybe can after we, the pod. After it sold out, podcast. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good young he's a good young fella and uh, – he um he was always wanting to uh get ahead in life in the racing game and no surprise to me. So he's uh no, he's going well. He's from a good family too. His old man's a good horse trainer who's only ever had a you know handful of horses. So no surprises. And he's done a very really good job with these second hand horses, Reese. Mm-hmm. So um uh I would say that if you, the horse that you've got with him would, would have it every chance. Yeah, and he's he's only going at eighteen percent his last fifty, so um, he's yeah, he's, he's taking yeah, on very well. Is that the same? Is, is, anyone well. looked at the uh, metropolitan percentages uh, in the last? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that that, that Rashiri is going to be a stayer, isn't it? By Japanese style or something? Yeah, correct. Yep, Stephanos stands in New Zealand. How much you got left, Matt Churchill, Jono? That's a um, that's a horse that I keep hearing a lot about. Nathan's pretty keen on it. Yeah, broken well as well. Good comments uh, there from uh, Gordon Pratt, I think, was the, the man that broke him in. But uh, Churchill had another winner during the week, two-year-old winner there. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Gordon Gordon's one of the best up here as well. He does a very, very good job. Uh, very excited about that one. I know Jack's very excited about that one as well. Very, very, very excited. I think Churchill's underrated, and I think um... – that's kind of our first horse together, Butchie. So, um... well, there's no guarantees in life, Jack, but that horse will run it too. He will have a race as a two year old, that horse. Guaranteed. 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 Yeah. yeah. Some good, people in that, good people in that horse as well, eh, Butch? So that'll be, a, uh, that'll be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. The very smart, very smart people have, uh, have, are involved. Might be a, um, if you like, you know, start listening to the podcast. If we start being able to do it each week, you can imagine what the uh, uncut version would be like, and you'll, well, if you, you'll probably if get you to hear a lot of that with uh, Butch post race. <laughs> well, we still want to be able to enjoy the hospitality at the sales and be led onto the tracks and that sort of stuff, you know? So we've got to be careful. But, um, True. Can I? True. Can I? Can I just say at the next sale there'll be a big fight for the golf buggy between Guy and myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too good. Hey, lads, it's been a pleasure. I've got to bounce. Yeah, me too. Hey, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Hey, Rob. That has been episode two of Another Walk. No, thanks. You've got it wrong again. Just a walk. Thanks. That's been episode two of Just a Walk. Thanks. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to race a horse with us, uh, we've got one tried horse with a little bit left and a bunch of yearlings with Kira Ma, Anthony and Sam Friedman, Gay and Adrian, and a little bit left of a Churchill cult with Nathan Doyle. To get involved or find out more, contact Jono, J-O-N-O, at themailbag.com.au. Uh, follow Mailbag Bloodstock socials um, and on Saturday uh, we'll have our tip sheet out where well, I promise you I'm going to start going a lot better than I have been. I apologise. And I'll be